Over five years ago, Brawl Stars made its debut as Supercell's newest game in open beta. The game was completely different from how it looks today in a lot of big ways. This video is a journey to the past to see how the game has changed throughout the years, focusing specifically on how different strategies and brawlers have risen to the top and fallen to the bottom of the meta. This is a history of Brawl Stars' meta before its global release, and it starts before Brawl Stars was Brawl Stars. Before Brawl Stars. The first publicly known version of the game was called Project Laser, and it only had six characters to choose from. Despite people's beliefs that the game was originally a portrait game, the earliest known version of Brawl Stars was actually landscape. There were no joysticks and very few controls. You could tap on the map and it would move your character to where you tapped, but you had very little control in how your character actually engaged with enemies. Basically, if an enemy was within range of your character, your character would shoot them, but that's pretty much it. A key difference of the game was actually a stealth mechanic. You couldn't see enemies hiding behind bushes or walls, and you could only see enemies who were in your character's direct line of sight. If you entered a bush, your sight would then be extended to the bush and behind the bush. But using bushes and walls was pretty much the only strategic aspect of the game at the time, since characters didn't have any super abilities. We don't know very much about the meta at this point, but the game was very slow paced and boring to play, which led to them completely reworking some core aspects of the game. Project Laser 2.0. Sometime along the way, they actually removed a character from the game. But more important than that, this is when Project Laser switched to Portrait. Players still tapped to move their characters, but now they could swipe to attack whenever they wanted and in any direction that they wanted. The stealth mechanic was removed from the game so you could actually see enemies behind walls as long as they weren't actually hiding in bushes. And this is when they introduced supers into the game, which would charge depending on how much damage your character did. In order to activate your super back then, you would tap a button and then swipe to aim and activate it. At the time, the only game mode was called Coin Rush, which worked just like Gem Grab does. The first team to hold 10 coins and keep them would win the match, and that makes Gem Grab the first original game in Brawl Stars history. We don't know very much about the meta at this point either, but the game went through a massive overhaul before it went into beta. The pre-beta Nita Mare. Sometime before 2017, Supercell decided to completely scrap the space theme for a Wild West theme, which I think is kind of funny because when I first saw it, I actually wish it would have been a space theme game. Also, Spike had a voice. Now I'm your smug little boy. Yeah, Spike is my name. Before its beta launch on June 14th, a YouTuber tournament was held to show the world Supercell's newest game. Nita was an absolute nightmare because there was no limit to how many bears she could have on the battlefield. After putting one bear down, she would charge up a second super and then place a second bear that would not replace the first. And at that point, she was just going to recharge her super over and over and over again until there were tons of bears chasing your enemies down. This was absolutely hilarious, but I'm really glad that Supercell nerfed her before the game went public because like I said, this would have been a nightmare. In fact, you could argue that Nita was actually the strongest brawler in the history of Brawl Stars. Mortis was another super strong brawler because all of his dashes traveled further than his current long dash does. His dash quickly received a 25% range nerf, but Mortis was still one of the best brawlers in the game for quite some time. Crow was also one of the strongest brawlers in the game and would continue to be at the top of the meta for a while. You were actually like really lucky if you could unlock him because legendary brawlers were even harder harder to unlock back then than they are now. Interestingly enough, Crow Super was much more predictable at the time because he would actually hang out in the air for a couple of seconds before landing, almost like he was flying, but his damage was just so high that it made up for his predictability. Pam and Piper's Purgatory. In June of 2017, Brawl Stars beta launched in a few select countries, and at the time there were only 15 brawlers in the game. On top of Gem Grab, we also had Heist, Bounty, and Solo Showdown, which at that time was just called Showdown. One month later, Piper was released and she was was just insane. The game was a lot more zoomed in back then, and depending on how you aimed and your opponent's location, it was completely possible for you to shoot them from outside their vision because of how long her range was. Really narrow and tall devices like phones showed more map up and down, whereas wider devices like tablets showed more to the sides. So not only could you shoot from off the screen, making it nearly impossible to dodge, she also just hit like an absolute truck. Supercell had to give her emergency nerf three days after she was released which was actually the first ever set of emergency nerfs in Brawl Stars' history. Pam and Terra were released in September 2017, and while Terra was like fairly average, Pam was a monster. She dealt tons of damage, it was almost impossible to dodge her shots, and her healing station circle was way bigger than it is now. Interestingly enough, before this, Poco was actually able to heal turrets and pets with his super, but they removed that ability, which left Pam as the queen of heals. And while Pam ruled gem grab, Mortis was ruled 
ruling over the first brand new game mode to the game, Brawl Ball. Brawl Ball was a very different game back then. Passing the ball didn't consume any ammo, so if you aimed your shot just right with the ball and then dashed directly where you shot, Mortis could actually kick the ball and dash right to it, so you didn't even have to fight enemies at all with Mortis in Brawl Ball. You could just dash right past them with the ball and score an easy goal. Now to be honest, it wasn't very easy to pull off, but plenty of skilled players got so good at it that Mortis continued to be the number one pick in Brawl Ball long before dribbling got nerfed to the ground and he was no longer good in the game mode. Daryl's Eternal Roll. December 2017 brought star powers to the game. Some star powers barely changed things at all, but others were so strong that they brought F tier brawlers way up to the top of the meta. For the next several months, we got tons of different buffs and nerfs and even complete reworks of star powers because of this update. But another big change to this update was how quickly supers actually charged. Before then, you'd actually have to wait for the super to charge all the way after you hit an enemy before you could activate it. This prevented players from spamming their super, but it did feel a little bit odd that you'd have to like wait a moment after charging your super to actually use it. The fact that supers could now instantaneously charge was actually an indirect buff to brawlers like Dynamite, Colt, and Brock because they were able to charge their super so frequently. In fact, all of them had their supercharge rate nerfed to offset this change. Now, up until this point, you may actually notice that some of the health and damage for every brawler was way lower than it is now. That's because in this update, they multiplied all of the stats by four in order to make balance changes a bit easier to do in the future. This was really weird for players at first because every brawler seemed to have infinite health, but also like infinite damage. The numbers were just crazy, but eventually everybody kind of adjusted their expectations and got used to new numbers. December also brought Daryl as the newest brawler in the game, and he was incredibly fun and incredibly strong. At the time, his super had an insane range of 23 tiles. That's over three times longer than it is now, and that lasted for an entire year before it got nerfed. Even though his super didn't automatically charge like it does now, playing heist with him was just straight up unfair. Because as long as he saved his super, once he spawned, he could roll across the entire map and get right back to the enemy safe. Daryl was so good that almost everybody completely stopped playing Bull and El Primo, so all of the tanks had their movement speeds increased in order to give them an advantage over longer ranged brawlers. Balance changes brought Mortis and Pam out from the top, and they were replaced with Crow and Daryl, who were the only S tier brawlers in my first ever tier list of the Brawl Stars meta. Auto aim stars. March 2018 was arguably the biggest change that actual gameplay Brawl Stars has ever faced. Up until this point, you would have an advantage if you played on different devices because you were zoomed further in on the map and you couldn't see very far from your brawler. If you were playing on your phone, you could see more up and down, which gave long range brawlers like Piper and Brock just an insane advantage. But if you played on a tablet, you could see way more to the left and right, which actually gave medium range brawlers like Nita and Crow a great advantage. But this update completely changed it because the game went from portrait to landscape. In order to do this, they zoomed out the camera so you could see the entire left and right side of a 3v3 map, and you could see more of the map above and below on a tablet, but the map would actually be grayed out past a certain point, so you wouldn't be able to see any brawlers in that gray area. Eventually, they blacked out those areas completely, and everyone can now see the same exact amount of map, no matter which device you're playing on. Now, when they first zoomed the camera out, it actually kind of made the game feel a little bit slow at first, but we did get used to it after they gave a slight speed buff to nearly all of the brawlers. But on top of all of that, they completely changed the control system. While the game was still in portrait, there were two ways to control your brawlers. One way was to drag a joystick to move around, and then you would tap the places you wanted to shoot at. So if you wanted to shoot at an enemy that wasn't moving for some reason, you would just tap on that enemy and your character would aim directly where you tapped. The other control system was basically the opposite. You would tap to the spot that you wanted your brawler to move to, and then swipe in the direction that you wanted them to shoot at. There were players who used swipe to shoot, but most long-term players preferred tap to shoot because it was way easier for you to actually hit your shots. That was actually really important because there was no auto-aim in the game up until this point, so if you wanted to hit your shots, you had to aim accurately. But once the game went to landscape, the only controls were the same two joysticks that we use today. And since controls were harder, they added quick fire into the game, which everyone just called auto-aim because that's what it was. You automatically aim and you always hit your target pretty much all the time. You see, before this update, close range brawlers like Bull and Shelly were actually considered to have a fairly high skill cap because it was so easy for you to miss your shots up close. But auto aim gave such a huge buff to shotgunners because you were guaranteed to deal max damage up close with auto aim, which was insane at that time. And if you think auto aim is good or useful now, it was the go-to 
option for nearly every single brawler in the game because of how good it was back then. Not just for close range brawlers, but also for long range brawlers. In order to give them a fighting chance against these close range brawlers that could auto aim you right in the face, they increase the speed of every projectile in the game and the size of the projectiles for most of the brawlers were increased as well, which meant that auto aim was the best aim for most of the brawlers in the game until some future changes. In fact, Piper, Brock, and Colt were just busted after these changes. Thankfully, their reign of terror only lasted a couple of short days before they decreased their projectile sizes back down, which reestablished a little bit of a need for you to aim your shots. But this was arguably the least balanced meta in the history of Brawl Stars, and many players felt like Brawl Stars was no longer a game of skill, because honestly, looking back, it, it kind of wasn't. A lot of the rest of the year was spent making tons of tweaks to nearly every brawler in order to rebalance the game, and that included a ton of changes to auto-aim in order to re-establish a high skill cap to the game. Which, also looking back, I feel like Brawl Stars has done an excellent job with. <laughs> Fixing the game. Penny and Frank were released in May 2018. They were both pretty balanced, great in some game modes, not amazing in others, definitely not overwhelming, and not underwhelming either. But three brawlers dominated the meta despite getting nerfed multiple times over. Colt's projectiles were still way too easy to hit with auto-aim, and since he dealt so much damage, no brawler was safe. And despite being a sheriff, no high safe was safe either. The only other brawler that could hold his own against Colt was Rico, who could bounce his shots off of the walls and who had a special advantage now that the game was zoomed out and he could actually see where his bounce shots would hit. Back then, the maps were four tiles shorter in width, which actually meant that there was much less room to escape Rico's bounce shots, especially with his super. Crow also terrorized the meta despite being one of the most changed brawlers in the game's history at that point. It took the developers several sets of nerfs before they were finally able to dethrone Colt, Crow, and Rico, and Terra, Poco, Spike, and Nita were able to rise to the top of the meta. Spike was also especially good for the same reason that Rico was, and despite many balance changes, Spike continued to stay at the top of the meta for quite a while. This was the first time in the game's history that medium range brawlers with a lot of control really thrived over high DPS brawlers. In May 2018, Heist got a huge rework which was really needed because honestly, it was it was a pretty unfair game mode and it was incredibly unbalanced. Before this update, only one team had a safe and you were randomly selected to either be on offense or defense. Offense won if they could destroy the enemy safe and defense won if they could defend until the time ran out. After the update, both teams would have a safe like Heist does and it became much more fun and way more balanced. Back then though, Bull and Daryl were so good in Heist that it was actually the smartest play to leave a Shelly or a Spike at your safe the entire time, specifically to defend against them charging up. This was important against Bull, but it was especially important against Daryl since he still had that 23 tile range super. In August of 2018, Frank climbed up to near the top of the meta due to his attack and super getting huge range buffs, and he was, he was crazy good, but not for long because that was actually nerfed soon after. Ludicrous Leon. In December 2018, we had been waiting over six months since the last new brawler was released, and up until this point, Supercell had never released a new legendary brawler. It was just Crow and Spike. That was until they released Leon in December 2018, a week before the game went global. Leon straight up just broke the game when he was released. He was insane. He was stronger than when Pam was released, even stronger than when Piper was released, and with the exception of maybe Nita before beta, he was probably the strongest brawler in the history of the entire meta of Brawl Stars. At the time, his damage scaled much lower from distance, so he dealt almost nothing, but he did way more damage up close. So his potential damage was through the roof, but what made him so insane was that his invisibility was even stronger than it is today. Not only did it last longer, but you couldn't see him until he was pretty much standing right on top of you. Supercell nerfed him with an emergency nerf just two days later, and they made it so that you could see him from a little bit further away than before, but he was still ridiculously strong, and no other brawler was even close to as good as he was for several months after he was first released. It didn't help that he was a legendary brawler either because he was just busted. This update also toned down Daryl's super range from 23 tiles down to 7 tiles in length, and this took him down from one of the best brawlers in the game to being one of the worst, even though Supercell gave him the first 
force Super to automatically charge over time. Soon after Leon's release, Brawl Stars was finally released to the entire world. Along with the global launch, we got two big changes that had a massive impact on the meta. Before this update, the camera angle for Brawl Stars was almost completely top down. This meant that you could see the same amount of distance in front of your brawlers as you could see behind them. But after the update, they tilted the camera back a little bit so you could see further toward the enemy spawn with the trade-off of seeing a bit less toward your spawn. This didn't have a huge impact on 3v3 matches because the map is mirrored so that you almost always are firing at enemies above you, but it did mean that players would have a slight advantage in showdown maps if they spawn near the bottom of the map, especially if they played long-range brawlers. In fact, this is actually still the case at the time of me releasing this video, which is why it's ideal for you to get to the bottom of every showdown map if you can. But 3v3 maps got a big change as well. They increased the width of each 3v3 map by four tiles, which gave more room to evade shots. This indirectly nerfed a lot of long range brawlers, but especially had a big impact on Rico and Spike because the sides of the maps were much further away from the center of the map and brawlers had a lot more room to avoid their shots. And with that, Brawl Stars was ready for a launch into the world. During the beta, Brawl Stars went from 15 to 21 total brawlers to choose from. Shelly and Spike were arguably the most balanced throughout the time with only six changes with Terra and El Primo falling behind with only eight changes. Then there's Pam, Colt, and Bo, who were the second least balanced with 15 changes during that time. And Dynamite had the most with 17 total changes. The third strongest brawler in the history of Brawl Stars was Piper when she was first released. And it's tough to say because most people didn't get to experience Nita before the beta launch, but I think Nita was the second strongest brawler in the game's history at that point, with Leon definitely being the strongest brawler in the game's beta. I want to know what your favorite moment of the Brawl Stars beta was, and if you didn't play it, I want to know what you learned from this video. I also want to know if you want to see an episode two where I cover the first three years after Brawl Stars was released globally. You can let me know by liking this video, and if it gets over 20,000 likes, I will do that. Also, subscribe so you don't miss it. For now, you can check out my other channels or watch this video on every update that we got in 2021. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in the future of Brawl Stars.